Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. Today we're going to set up a flagpole for the Scouts of Sale. It's a widow flagpole kit and it has no instructions. <laughs> so let's see what we can do with it. We don't know where we're going to put this flagpole yet. So we've chosen this outside area and uh, I'm going to attach it to the fence here. That's going to be our temporary solution, which may end up being permanent. But we're going to attach it here and we'll get in and have a look at some of the parts and see if we can figure out how this thing goes together. So our flagpole came with this little flag and that's uh, okay. But we have a much nicer one that uh, I'll leave the scouts to put that one up and we'll just use the one that came with the kit. It has a little finial on top that will double as a uh, little pulley for the rope or halyard to go around. These clips that will go on the halyard to attach the flag, a cleat, and the screws for the cleat are in the little bag. And it came with a halyard, some rope, line. Usually you would set this up by itself somewhere and you would put this pipe in the ground. We don't know where this is going to go permanently and you know you'd need to pour concrete around this. Dig it into the ground and pour concrete in. The four sections of pipe would, if this was in the ground, just slip your flagpole down into this thing in the ground. It's a bit of PVC pipe it looks like. And the sections of pipe or tubing the flagpole just slipped together. It's got a tapered end. And I just noticed that this one has pre-drilled holes for the cleat. And that's important information because I brought a drill just in case I needed to do that. But they're already drilled for the cleat. Now, that leads me to believe that there will be another section that doesn't have a tapered end because the finial would, uh, yeah, that's just tapered one end and this has no taper so there will be one section of pipe that doesn't have a taper and that will be the top. So your finial, I'm calling it a finial, I don't know what it's called. Finial will, will go in here. And it looks like that just friction fits in. There we go. That's how that goes. This is all just friction fit together. Now, the next thing we're going to do is get our halyard ready. Before we put the whole thing up, we'll get the halyard ready. So what I'm going to do with this is set this up so hopefully it can't go wrong. This is a uh, this rope is pretty good. It's a nice rope, not uh, prickly and not rubbish, so it's pretty good. Now what I want to do first is I want to find the center of the rope. So I'll just put the two ends together and find the center of this rope. So if you just pull it up like that, that will be the center. I'll put a mark there to find the center. I'm just going to put a knot here to make it easier to find that center. Because I'm going to run this through the finial now before I put everything up in the air. So it should go up through here and down through the other one. And this acts like a little pulley. I just pull that through and you see that made it easier to find the center there. 
I could have gone past it. I'll undo my knot. I'm going to come down three or four inches and I'm going to put this clip on. So I will put the loop through, go over the clip like that, and that gives me a ring hitch. We'll get our flag out and we'll see where the next clip has to go. This flag That's pretty good, the printed flag. We have a nice properly sewn one, but I'll leave that for the scouts to put up and I'll just use the one that came with the kit. We have a really nice flag. And uh, we won't worry about which way is up right now. I just want to get the spacing of these clips. All right, so as I said, we won't worry about which is right side up right now. We just want to Attach it so it's proper space apart. So again, just put the loop through, pull it over the top of the clip, and there you have your ring hitch. So that's good spacing. Seems good. All right. That takes care of that operation. And we will show you how to fold the flag properly. I'll put this back in my toolbox for the moment. So again, these are adjustable. That'll be fine. So let's screw on a section of our pipe flagpole. The one with the holes I think will be the bottom. Let's have a look over here. Yeah, that looks a good height for the scouts to reach. Even our little cubs and maybe some of our squirrels can even reach that. I think they could. So the way we're going to put our flagpole up is we're going to attach it to the fence. And this is a thing I use a lot in uh, well, working in set construction. We use this a lot and we call it pipe strapping. I went looking for pipe strapping. You don't call it pipe strapping here. So if you're going to do an installation like ours, this stuff is called builder's band. I call it pipe strapping. Okay, I'm going to cut off a little section of pipe strapping here, enough to go around the pipe. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So I don't need a, a whole lot to get around here. You see to go like that. I'll try that for now and see how that works out. Okay, so I'm going to bend this around the pipe. This is our, uh, what was it called? Builder's band, pipe strapping I call it. And then I will just put the screws through these holes, probably these little holes. <laughs> Will I be able to reach that? No, I think I have to put them all up now. See, this one has a dent in it. So I'm gonna have to do something with that dent. That might work. There we go, that will do. You can see that dent there. Let's get our final section. So you can see this is why I did all this beforehand. Huh, what's this one like? This one's pretty good. That went together easily. And we'll put this section up. And we don't want to lose. Did I take that knot out? Yes, I did. So what you want to do, the other, the other thing I should have done here or shown you beforehand is you want to take these two ends now because you don't want to lose 
the halyard now through the uh, finial up there. So it actually kind of holds itself up a little bit there now. <laughs> Stand back and get a look to see if it looks at all plumb. I would have liked to have moved it out to the next one, but I think it would be flapping in the tree. Okay, that looks pretty straight. I've found uh, tin snips better for cutting this stuff. I had such trouble finding this stuff that I uh, went with it. It's probably gonna rust, but I think before we have any trouble with that issue, this flagpole will probably blow down. <laughs> it's very slight aluminum, but I think it'll serve us well. This uh, pipe strapping builder's band you can get in uh, stainless steel and copper, which of course wouldn't rust. Flagpole, as nice as it is, is uh, very slight and uh, I don't imagine it's going to last for the duration of our scout hut here. There's another one here. I'm going to put this and twist this cleat out so it's more in the center. I just bent it round. It, actually, that was one of the things I was looking at. There is, uh, you can buy clamps like this, but that was uh, pretty costly. And uh, they were plastic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bend this because this is a bit uh, sharp. So I'll just bend this over on itself so that there's no sharp end showing. I'll just screw so it will. If I had my tin snips, I could make a nice clean cut, but I don't, so I won't. Oh, there we go. That's a bit safer. I'll put the cut section underneath. I don't want our little people getting hurt. Like that. And then just squeezing it together so that jagged edge isn't showing there. So I will make two more of these and you can see when that goes on it's much safer looking. Okay, so all that's left to do is screw on the cleat. And we got our pre-drill holes and our cleat and our couple of screws. And I really suggest you do this with a screwdriver as opposed to a drill because this aluminum is so thin you could easily strip this out. So we'll just screw on our cleat and then we're ready to clip on our flag. So put both screws in before you tighten them. It's a general rule of thumb when you're putting in multiple screws is put them all in first and then tighten. So there we go, you just want to give a little tighten there. So we've got our flag and our clips ready. Here's our top clip. Now the top, there is a top and bottom through the Union Jack. And the broad white stripe goes up the corner with the broad white stripe goes up and 
And of course the other one goes on the bottom. And that's that. So make sure your line isn't twisted before you raise it. to the top. I'll bring you in close and show you how to tie off on the cleat. So that will be sufficient. You only need to tie off this end here. But usually you would do both because that keeps the bottom of the flag tight as well. So it doesn't matter what way you go around because it could go either way but you need to go around, so you go under the bottom, under the bottom horn, and then the top horn. Then you cross over and go under. And all you need to do now is do a twist to finish this off. So if you twist it like so, that is completely secured. So the tail should be coming out the same side here, not the other way. Oops, shouldn't be coming out. It should be it shouldn't come out this side. This is the side you went around, so when you finish it should be the same side. So that is all that's required. So again, under the bottom horn, over the top horn, so you do one full turn, and under the bottom horn, and then you just twist Put a twist, and that's all that's required. This line here keeps this one from slipping out. When you're lowering the flag, it shouldn't touch the ground. We lower it slowly. The Cub Scout will lower the flag and should take the utmost care to see that no part of the flag comes in contact with the ground. It is the custom of the Scout movement that no one salutes when the flag is lowered from a practical point of view. It is advisable for a scouter or instructor to stand near the flag so that the risk of prolonged delay if something goes wrong is reduced to a minimum. And this is... Twenty third of July, nineteen seventy six. So, as you can see, regardless of which way it's flying, the broad white stripe is on the top. If it was upside down, the broad white stripe would be on the bottom, this one here. And you don't want to do that unless you're in distress. And that is a sign of distress. So if you want to show that you're in distress, you can fly your flag upside down. Otherwise it would be uh, disrespectful to fly it upside down. All right, let's try and fold our flag. Now there isn't a ceremonial way to fold the Union Jack, but this is the recommended way on the government site for flag handling. 
So you fold it in half, and fold it in half again. And then you can come up. This bit really here really depends. This bit really depends on the thickness of the cloth that the flag is made from. Sometimes you need that, sometimes you don't. Then you do a little triangle fold. And you just keep flipping and making triangles. It's a lot easier to keep it tight with two people and make a really nice tidy job of it. And our flag has a memory of the way it was in the, in the box now. So now we've got this odd bit left over at the end. What do we do with that? Well, there's a couple of ways to deal with it. You can, not that way, this way. Fold this into a triangle and then you can tuck that into this pocket you've made at the end here. And that takes a bit of fiddling to get in there. Well, it's not the tidiest job, but you get the idea. And you can tuck it all in together. Now, as I said, you don't have to do this. There's no uh, proper way to deal with the Union Jack flag. But it is the recommended way. It makes a nice little package that holds itself together. Okay, I'm going to show you how to tie off the end so it doesn't slip back through the finial at the top. And this is really difficult to demonstrate because your hands are always in the way when you're showing how to tie knots. This should only be done by adults. This is called a butane backsplice. And you just heat up the end. Be careful, it will catch fire and it will melt and catch fire and drip so now it will not fray apart we call it a butane backsplice this is not something you should try without well you shouldn't try it at all it's for adults Okay, so you've got your two ends. And you want to tie the two ends together. So I've got this end over here, and I've got this end over here. So you want about that much so you can work with it. So you go over. This one goes over this one, and then it goes over itself. And then you got these two loops here, and this goes up through these two loops, like so probably do a little longer tail there, but you want to keep them both the same. So now this one goes over this one, keeping it, you know, the same side. And it goes over itself, and make that tail a bit longer. Goes over that one, and then over itself, and around and then up through the two little loops you've made. And then when you have that, you pull the two together like so. And they should look the same. And it makes a little attractive finish. And it's very tight, will not work itself apart. 
difficult to untie this, but it's a nice attractive knot. Bend, actually. It's a bend because you're tying two lines together. That makes it a bend. Sometimes call a fisherman. Double fisherman's knot in this case. If you just go around once, it's a fisherman's bend. You go around twice, it's a double fisherman's bend. And it's kind of attractive and makes it nice more attractive than a sheet bend or but that's a good way to do your halyard so this is our nice sewn flag that we have and I'm going to show you another way this can be done I recommend you clip this on to the clips just as we've done and tie it because this one has a toggle and a little halyard string thing. I don't know what this is called actually. So make a bowline or something here and clip it on and just put the uh, toggle in the other clip like that. But there is another way to do it but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you can tie the clips to each end of the line. But the danger with that is because you don't have a continuous loop, you will at some point lose the line all the way to the top. And then the only way to get it is to take the pole down and retrieve the line. So I wouldn't recommend that. But this is our other flag nicely sewn one. So you clip the toggle in here like so and then down here you could just make a loop now that you know the length you need or a bowl and whichever you prefer like so. So the totally ironic thing about this operation today, today's Canada Day. <laughs> That's how you put up the widow flagpole kit. Ah.